Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be covering a bunch of new products. Everything's linked down below in the order that we're going to check them out. So we're going to talk about the Eoshin EV300 O's. And while I was making this video, actually, I just got them. And I'll explain my first impressions. Tomorrow, I'll have the shootout. There's a lot of interesting things about it, which we're going to cover. Also, some crazy price drops and also some audible mentions. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started here. So first of all, we have the Eoshin EV300. Oh, now this is using OLED technology and it has a, it comes with a module. You could actually put two modules in there, but it comes with one, which is called the Rapid Mix. And it's using the same technology as the Rapid Fire. I don't know if they're OEMing it or they just figured out how that works and then they actually implemented it. So that does come along with the goggles itself. And um, it has some really nice features and the ease of use is out of this world. And also the screens are proper. So let's go ahead and scroll down real quick. Um, so there we go. Um, so it is four by three, by the way, 16 by nine will crop the top and let's move down. So here you have two adjustments on it. Actually, I have it with my assistant right now. He's getting the product shots. So you have the normal IPD adjustments and you also have the, the focus. You could actually uh, fix the focus as well, which is really crazy because I could get like an absolute clear image. And another thing about it is, as you can tell here, they're trying to show you that the rapid mix is awesome. We're going to be testing that tomorrow against the rapid fire. And we're also going to be testing um, it with the rapid fire in this goggle and to see how that performs as well. Now, these wheels right here have nothing to do with the uh, focal length or IPD adjustments or anything. These are actually for the menus. And that right there, like, for example, this one will get you into the menu. And this one, you scroll through the menu, you click it down and you go into whatever you want and you modify. It is so intuitive. It's just like it's, it's the easiest way I've ever seen to navigate into anything. You have two of these on each side and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, the user interface looks kind of familiar. So I think I know where they probably went and got this one done. And that, that means I have really high hopes for this one. So it also does have USB-C. I've also just tried testing if you could boot it up with a USB-C, but that's not the case. So yeah, you don't have USB-C as power. It's just for firmware. So maybe I made a mistake here. Maybe my, 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 my charger wasn't connected or something. So they're saying you could also power it from the USB-C, but I didn't see that, but I'm going to have to retest it. So don't take my word for it. Let's just give it a benefit of that so far. I'll double check that later on in the official review here. Um, again, we'll have two module bays, so you can take whatever one you want. And also, I know how the module bay works off of it. It works off of RSSI, but not all uh, not all modules output RSSI. So you got to keep that into consideration here. And um, yeah, so we'll be testing that uh, tomorrow as well. Now, for the field of view, I don't know what field of view it has probably written up there, but I can tell you the comparison between it and an HDO. Uh, they're about the same, but the only difference that you really get to feel is that when you put on the HDOs, one, not two. So when you put those on, it feels like you're in the middle of the theater and you still have some black around you and like the screen's a little bit further away. When you put these on, it feels like you're not in the front seat, but you're a little bit, you know, back, like 25% uh, of the way back. And we can say that the the, the fat sharks are like 75% of the way back. Uh, but with that focus, it's absolutely insane. I mean, it fills everything right up for you. So I don't know how it is when we fly it. So we'll, we'll come back to that. So another nice thing I noticed, it is by far one of the most comfortable goggles I've ever put on my face. That's one thing. Two, they provide you with leather and also some kind of fabric. So you can choose what kind of uh, one you want on your face, like what's touching your face. And the face plates are, there's two of them that come in the box, one for a wide face and one for a much more narrow face. So yeah, it's, it's, it's proper. It's proper. Except the uh, antennas they provide. I don't even think they provide with antennas. I don't even think it came with antennas. So I don't really remember. Well, anyways, we'll see that in the, inside the, um, the review. So overall, it's uh, so far seeming pretty promising. And uh, I'll let you guys know tomorrow when we do the official review. But um, it's, it's nice. Like it's really nice. But again, we'll have to wait until we uh, I go and, and fly this thing. And I'll also know by then uh, when uh, the release date, the official release date is for this. This is not new, but it's an honorable mention. And why is honorable mention? Look at the price, 21 bucks. What do you get for $21 is insane. Even no name brands don't even sell stuff that comes close to this for $21. You have a nine volt regulator. It's an F405. You still have your on-screen display. So you can, basically what that means is you can either go analog or digital and change whenever you want. 
They also have the connector ready made for you. So you don't even have to solder your DJI stuff. Just plug it in. You're good to go. And that's really nice for $21. That's insane. Again, you're just getting the flight controller here. And again, like I mentioned, you got the OSD, you have everything. So that 10 volt regulator can either be used for your analog video transmitter and or the HD stuff like the DJI stuff. These caught my eye. I don't know how they're going to perform, but the size is slightly different than usual. Uh, usually we, when we run stuff of this nature on micros, they're usually 1103, 1104, 1107. Here we're starting to see the 1204 come into play. And they're proving to be somewhat efficient. I don't know how efficient, so I have a couple of these on the way. I have the 5150 and the 8150 KV on the way. Uh, I will be bench testing these, thrust testing these, and comparing them to the older 1103s, 1105s, just to get an idea of how well they, they, they perform in terms of efficiency and also thrust. And obviously, probably I'm probably going to be putting these on a build as well. Now, here is a mention, but not a recommended mention. So these look like the DYS motors rebranded because I think DYS is going out of business, but don't take my word for it. Um, usually when you go to buy a cheap motor that costs about this much, usually you want to go for the higher KV because not all, like for example, I've gotten a couple cheap motors where the KV was about 100 or 200 less than what it was stating. So yeah, just keep that in mind. If you wanted like a 2400 KV, don't buy the 2400, go for the 26 and uh hopefully you get that right so these are pretty cheap not recommended but yeah just uh just to mention i just i just saw those and uh here's some more as well uh this one's 2450 kv 2205 this one was 2207 uh 2600 kv so they're both for 4s motors here pretty cheap though pretty cheap the next step up would be something like this i think these are the latest uh eco motors from shing from iflight uh, you get four for 52 bucks 2306 1700 kV, which is for a 6S build. Um, they look nice, and uh, I'll be testing these very soon. And we also have a 4S uh, version, which is the 2306 2450. Again, these are linked down below, uh, so you go ahead and check them out. This is hella interesting. So this is a Crazy B type board with 20 amp ESCs, up to 5S, not 6S, up to 5S, and has a 10 volt regulator, and it has pretty beefy FETs. Let's take a closer look at this. Again, this is a crazy B board. So this is the flight controller, the on-screen display, the 10 volt regulator, and the ESCs into one board. It's pretty expensive, but I think it might be worth it if you are looking for something that's gonna last. So let's get a closer look from the bottom side here. So one thing, this right here, if you see this right there, hopefully you guys can see my mouse, <clears throat> that is the memory chip. So you can even black box log. So that's one huge benefit to this because these are these could be a nightmare to tune and black box logs could really help you, especially if you wanted a really nice, super light flying, maybe HD setup. This 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 might be the one for like a super light one. The 3.3 volt regulator seems to be pretty beefy. So that's a really nice sign. F405. So not the latest, but th that's I mean, what do you expect? This is, what, this is the only amount of space you have here. You still have your on screen display and you still have an mp6 obviously you should have an mp6000 there's your mp6000 the motors would go into these areas here but if we scroll down here the fets they're using now the fets they're using are slightly larger as you can tell they're pretty big but what we're seeing here let me just double check what i'm saying okay there's two fets into one so this would be basically for that this one would be for that and this one for would be for that so these are like dual fets they have two fets within themselves now, hopefully it's a proper name brand. I don't know uh, these markings. These don't look like Toshiba's currently, but I don't know. They're almost as big as the 4T effect driver, which is a good sign, a slight good sign. So I'm very curious to see how well these are going to stack up. And again, uh, the size of the board is 30.5, but it's not the mounting hole. The mounting hole is 25.5, which is crazy B type mounting. So keep that in mind if you are purchasing this. You also do have the uh, connector there. This connector here, is this for the DJI setup? I'm so curious because this has a 10 volt regulator, by the way, I forgot to mention, this thing has a 10 volt regulator, which is crazy. I'm guessing probably not. Maybe maybe a Vista would probably fit there, but again, time will tell. So this is the things that you provide you with. You still have decent filtration though, by the way. So um, that, that's that's a nice setup. iFlight is just killing it lately. Next product. The V-Lock. So I was promised a couple review units. They actually told me, hey, can you please do our noise testing on them, on the T-Motor V-Locks um, a long time ago, right when they when I first ever saw these posted, but they've just 
barely been in stock. They're just selling like crazy. So I'm guessing they're good. This is the cheapest one. Now listen to this. 45 amp, 3 to 6 S, Beale Heli 32 with a 10 volt regulator for $35. That is unheard of. That is un unheard of. With a heat sink, and we can see the filtration through the heat sink. That's that that's that's good that's really good actually you got the holes for your capacitor uh you got the edge plating uh they didn't go cheap on this they did not go cheap on this so the only difference is going to be between these because they released three of them 45 50 and i think a 60. the only difference is going to be the fets uh, nothing else really um here obviously possibly the firmware as well because you know the dead time and everything so this is the step up from that which is a 50 amp it's a uh, 50 it's 50 bucks uh, you still got your 10 volt regulator and you still it's a, still a 32 and 3 to 6s which is really nice you still got that heat sink and the same amount of filtration so this is still an honorable mention 160 bucks for this you get pretty decent motors a proper frame and a decent stack actually pretty good stack i have it on one of my favorite quadcopters so yeah, if you didn't know that, this is a really nice place to get started. This would be a 4S setup, by the way, because you got 2688KV motors here. Uh, here, I have really high hopes for this, like really, really high hopes for this. I don't know why, just the components that are being used. For example, we have a 1504 3800KV. It's a 4-inch, and it's supposed to be really light. So I have, I'm really hoping it's really efficient. Kind of like the Parrot 6S. I, I, I think it's going to be very hard for me to love anything other than that Parrot 6S. That Parrot 6S could literally fly for more than seven minutes. And I could never fly it more than seven minutes because I just keep crashing. Um, it's, it's insane the amount of flight time you get on that thing on 6S. Especially if you buy those batteries. So make sure you check my video. It is by far one of my favorite micros till this day. And it's going to be very hard to beat that one uh, in my opinion. So yeah, I have really big high hopes for this. Uh, it's already in stock. Hopefully, I could get a, I could get one in and actually test it. So Brother Hobby released their five inch. Now this is a pretty interesting setup. So we have thirty five amp ESCs, not twenty two oh four motors, not twenty two oh five or twenty threes. We have twenty oh four motors. It's a five inch. It's also a four S. Now this is uh, two hundred and fifty grams with a battery, and it's a five inch, but it's 250 grams with an 850 milliamp battery uh, with the propellers on and everything. So this is a race quadcopter. But what I could see possibly doing is putting some sort of a split camera in there if you wanted some HD recording. The bottom plate seems to be one piece bottom plate here. Um, and the overall, this is really bad. I don't like those zip ties. <clears throat> Just tape that shit. Um, so yeah, you can see 247.5 grams with everything. I really hope that's TPU and not PLA. Uh, because this thing is pretty expensive, is it? Mm, yeah, it's, I would consider it expensive now. 210 is a good is a good range. Above that, it starts to get expensive, and it better be really worth it, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Hopefully, I get one in. We test it out. And uh, the canopy, it just doesn't really say anything about the canopy here. Uh, so we'll have to wait and uh, see how that actually uh, turns out. I don't know why they give you zip ties. Anyways, well, that's about it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, more updates on Mesh Flight will be upcoming soon. And uh, tomorrow I'll have the Eashing EV300 video out. And, um, well, that's it, guys. Everything's linked down below. And come join my Patreon. You get exclusive access to a lot of things. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.